the cerebral cortex. So cerebral cortex, uh, cerebral cortex has uh, the outer gray layer and it is divided into five lobes. So our five lobes is our frontal lobe, uh, the, this red one, the uh, temporal lobe, this blue one, and this green one is the parietal lobe, and uh, the yellow one is the occipital lobe. Uh, the other lobe is the inside, which is our insular lobe, uh, usually seen inside the the gyrus, this uh, inside of the sulcus of our brain. So it is responsible for conscious activity of the cerebrum. So our voluntary movements usually. So basal ganglia, the third one, uh, these are cell bodies in white matter that helps the cerebral cortex produce smooth voluntary muscle movements. So uh, it, it helps uh, have a smooth movement. Uh, it helps uh, coordinating. Like if your biceps will contract, then your triceps will also relax. So this is the work of our basal ganglia. So next is the diencephalon. So in the diencephalon, uh, we have two, thalamus and the hypothalamus. So uh, the, the thalamus relays sensory impulse to the cortex. And it also provides the pain gate. So the pain center of our uh, brain is in the thalamus. And it is also part of the retic reticular activating system. So hypothalamus next, uh, this regulates the autonomic response of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Then uh, next is it regulates the stress uh, response or sleep, uh, appetite, body temperature, fluid balance and emotion. Also in the hypothalamus, uh, it is responsible for the production of hormones secreted by the pituitary and the hypothalamus. So next is the brainstem. So in brainstem, we have the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. So uh, midbrain is responsible for the motor coordination. Uh, it also contains the visual reflex and our auditory relay centers. So next, so next is our pons. Uh, it contains the respiratory centers and regulates breathing. So uh, surely in stroke patients, uh, if we say pontine bleed, uh, we usually see uh, fixed pinpoint pupils. And also, uh, this is the time that the patient uh, is in comatose state and uh, will start having difficulty in breathing. So also, uh, third is medulla oblongata. So it contains all afferent and efferent tracts and cardiac respi, uh, vomiting, and vasomotor centers. It also controls heart rate, uh, respiration, uh, blood vessels, then diameter, sneezing, swallowing, vomiting, and coughing. So uh, usually what, what we always uh, see in brainstem infarcts uh, really is uh, difficulty in swallowing and uh, there will be more secretions, uh, especially in uh, patients with brainstem stroke. Then uh, next is uh, cerebellum. Uh, it coordinates 
uh, muscle movement, posture, equilibrium, and muscle tone. Uh, uh, usually, our gait and balance also is under our cerebellum. So, uh, cerebrovascular disease, uh, it includes the ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and other uh, cerebrovascular anomalies such as aneurysm and EV malformations. So, sudden onset of focal neurologic deficit due to underlying vascular pathology. So, uh, we also have uh, what we call transient ischemic attack. So it is a transient episode of a neurologic deficit <clears throat> in focal brain, spinal retinal ischemia, or uh, without evidence of infarction. So uh, it usually resolves within 24 hours uh, without, uh, without evidence in the CT scan of uh, an infarct or an hemorrhage. Also, like uh, this retinal ischemia, there is what we call uh, sudden blind, uh, sudden transient blindness, uh, especially in uh, what we call uh, amaurosis fugax. So there is transient ischemic attack also it's under under transient ischemic attack so next uh for the clinical manifestation so uh so there are these are the types of stroke uh which are common so we have thrombotic embolic and uh, hemorrhagic stroke so in thrombotic stroke it typically uh there is no decreased level of consciousness within the first 24 hours. And symptoms get progressively worse as the infarction and edema increases. And in embolic stroke, uh, there is sudden severe symptoms. Uh, warning signs are less common and client remains conscious and may have a headache. And lastly is the hemorrhagic stroke uh, with sudden onset of symptoms uh, symptoms progress over minutes or hours uh, due to ongoing bleeding so uh, this are the CT scan in uh, which uh, differentiates uh, the hemorrhagic and the ischemic stroke so this white part uh, if in CT scan there is a white part, so we call it uh, hyperdense, hyperdensity. So usually uh, it is uh, blood, and I think uh, CT scan uh, detects uh, calcium, so that's why more on density, hy hyperdensity. Even in the outer part, the, the skull is also white. So, but in inside here is blood. So in our blood there is also calcium, and at the other side is ischemic, which is this uh, dark gray part. So this is hypodense when it's ischemic. So in ischemic stroke we have the two: the thrombotic and your embolic stroke so so here uh, we have the right brain damage and the left brain damage so usually in the right uh, which is more in our creative side there will be impaired judgment impaired time concepts impulsive, uh, left-sided neglect. So patient cannot recognize that the patient has a weakness on his left side. Then uh, patient has paralysis, 
or hemiplegia on the left side and 